everyone. Welcome to the Light Gate. It is Monday and we are ready to have a really good show tonight. It's going to be interesting. We have lots of pictures, lots to talk about, and somebody that Preston has admired for a great deal of time. We are coming to you live from the beautiful city of New Orleans in Louisiana at 105.3 FM and the, at the United Public Radio Network, and I'm messing it backwards, and the United UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 107.7 FM. We're on Roku, we are on YouTube, and we're on Facebook. We have many other radio stations on board with us, and those of you who cannot see us, we will endeavor to give you very good full descriptions. Take it away, Preston. <laughs> Thank you, Dolly. Super excited. We have an amazing guest who... If you haven't heard of him, you sure should have, because he is a huge and very influential figure in the UFO field. And yeah, welcome to the Light Gate. Super excited. This is episode 33. I, of course, am your host, Preston Dennett, and my lovely co-host is Dolly Safran, <laughs> uh, experiencer and the subject of my book, Symmetry. And I just want to give a shout out to a bunch of you folks, because I really always appreciate you guys showing up. So thank you very much. It's awesome to see all of you guys here. Hello, Don and Mary and Doxy. Hello, Janice. So glad you could join us tonight. And Dana and Louise, all the way from New Jersey. Very cool. Thank you very much. Namaste. Your generosity knows no bounds. Truly, truly appreciative. And who else do we got here? Ah, Central Wisconsin. Always awesome to see you. Synthetic nature. Hello, Ruth Kleiber. Nice big group in chat. Very, very cool to see. Hello, Michael. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Lynn. Hello, W. Decker. So appreciative. Thank you very, very much. You're going to love tonight's guest. You may not have heard of him before, but wow, oh wow, I am a huge fan. Hello, Raul. Thank you so, so much. Scarlet Fire. Quite a few guys in here today, Dolly. Very, very cool. Hello, Hello. Brian. Thanks so much. Tracy and Bim Jim and John P. Adventures. Thank you very much. Soulshine Center. Becky Duncan. Hello. And Z Sun Dragon. Busy. Salvador Soto, thank you very much for joining us. Rebecca, I'm in a Rama group. Very, very cool. All right, well, let's just get to our guest because I don't want to waste any time. And our guest tonight is the amazing, the one and only Sisto Paz Wells. Here, let me just put up the little banner here that I made so you can see who he is. Sisto was born in Lima, Peru on December 12, 1955, and studied with the Marist brothers and continued his university studies in history at the Catholic University of Peru and has an honorary doctorate from Bircham University in Miami. During his adolescence, he was a restless seeker of truth and spirituality in yoga and meditation. And since 1974, he claims to have lived experiences of extraterrestrial contact. And he has good evidence for it, let me tell you. On 10 occasions, he has summoned journalists from various countries in advance, including Juan Jose Benitez, a very well-respected and prolific researcher, to, and many others, to witness the UFO sighting over the Chilca Desert, south of Lima. Following these first contacts and instructions from the elder brothers and space teachers, he founded the Rama mission and led it until the moments of its dissolution in 1990 to avoid possible sector, let me get this word right, sector, sectarianism. There we go. Sisto claims to have gone up alone or sometimes accompanied on board UFOs having direct contact with its crew members. And what, what else do we have going on here? Dolly, you're distracting me. <laughs> as, as well as having traveled with them on more than one occasion, taken on board to visit one of the colonies in the moon of Jupiter, Ganymedes, he has many 
other interviews with them regarding many topics throughout the encounters and written in his books. Sister has traveled to 64 countries, wow, giving conferences, seminars, and congresses in the five continents, being invited to give two reference two conferences at the headquarters of the United Nations in the Society of the Americas. Also to important universities such as Columbia, New York, John F. Kennedy of San Francisco, University of Montreal in Canada, and the Autonomous University of Mexico. In fact, in 2014, it was requested by Congressman of the U.S. Senate to Washington, D.C. to speak at conferences and was interviewed by the press club of that city. So he has tirelessly continued to investigate the extraterrestrial phenomena in all its forms and aspects and is the author of 21 books, several of which have been translated into English, also Italian, Portuguese, and German. Some of the books include The Extraterrestrial Guides, Interdimensional Contact, The Secret Threshold, Guardians and Watchers of the World, Messenger of the Com Cosmos, and many, many others. He's explored the Middle East and Africa, went to Egypt 23 times, Israel seven times, three times in Jordan, and has had many amazing adventures. He's currently writing two new books about his experiences and investigations, as well as the widely prophesied future events and planetary changes. So due to the recent release of information in the U.S. Senate, Sisto has been requested by many television and radio stations in the world to give his opinion and qualified point of view. Now, Sisto does speak primarily Spanish, I believe, and we have brought a translator on to help us through the interview. So this is going to be really exciting. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have not heard of Sisto Paswells. I have. I've been following him for a long time. I've talked to people who've been on, in his groups and seen UFOs and had some really unusual experiences. So this is going to be a real treat tonight. Let me just bring them both on. Here is Sisto Paswells. Hello, Sisto. Hello, Preston. Hello, Dolly. It's a... It's a very special Welcome. moment for Thank me. Thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you. And here is Cesar. You know, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pronounce your last name, Cesar. It's Ray Tagui? Yes, Ray is fine. <laughs> All right. And Cesar thank will be translating for us tonight. So thank you very much, Cesar. We truly appreciate you. it. It's Lovely. a real honest to God treat to have you both on. <laughs> All right, well, let's just get started because I know, Sisto, you have so much information, so many really amazing experiences. I've written about you actually in some of my own books <laughs> because you are so influential in this field. So I thought, like I like to do, is just to start with your childhood and what experiences you had as a young boy and how you got involved in this field. Let's see. Realmente nací en un ambiente tan favorable al tema que todo contribuyó a que eh, mis hermanos y yo nos iniciáramos en el tema del contacto. I was born and raised in an environment that invited me to delve into this uh, themes. Uh, it was something that, uh, as Sister will tell later, um, his dad was already working for the Peruvian government, and uh, I'll let him uh, explain a little bit further in detail. O sea, mi, mi padre era asesor científico en materia de aeronáutica y astronomía de la Fuerza Aérea del Perú. He was working for the Peruvian um, air, uh, aerospace uh, uh, for the government and um, in aeronautics, and he was also investigating the subject of extraterrestrials, but in a little bit different way than Sixto did. Oh, y wow. entonces, en ese ambiente familiar, mi, mi padre nos enseñó a pensar, no a creer que esto fuera posible. So my dad, in that environment, taught us to think, not to believe, just to think that uh, we're not alone. So um, it, everything started like that. Y como, como él se quedaba en la parte científica y estadística, nosotros quisimos dar un pasito más hacia adelante. He was more so into the scientific and the statistics point of view, but uh, Sixto and his brother, they, they took a step forward and tried something uh, new. Y a través de la meditación, 
intentamos tener un contacto mental con estos seres si es que existen y si es que han desarrollado su poder psíquico. And through meditation, they try to see if they can communicate with them. If they are developed, they probably can uh, um, feel and, 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 and sense what we're doing. Agreed. Yeah. Y, y, y ocurrió lo que nadie se hubiera imaginado. O sea, recibimos un mensaje entre mi madre, mi hermana y yo. And something really uh, unthinkable happened. We received a message, my mom, my sister, and myself uh, at the same time, which was incredible. O sea, realmente no, no pensamos que fuera real. Pensamos que podía ser imaginación, pero pedimos una prueba. We didn't think it was real, but we just thought and asked, let's get a proof of this is, o sea, you know, being a, a real. Porque era, era demasiado fácil como se había, se había recibido. O sea, yo ya tenía un año antes practicando Hatha Yoga y Mantra Yoga Meditación. It was so easy for him to to capture this message from a being, but uh, a year before he was already practicing uh, meditation. Pero este, como estábamos en el plan de experimentar, pedimos la prueba y, y recibimos la indicación de irnos al desierto al sur de Lima. But since we were experimenting, we received uh, the invitation to go to the desert south of Lima. Y realmente lo tomamos todo como un juego, o sea, no nos lo tomamos muy en serio que digamos. And we really took this all as a game. We didn't take it as serious as, as we should have. Pero ocurrió lo que nadie hubiera imaginado. Detrás de los cerros y a la hora indicada apareció un objeto que se colocó encima de todos nosotros a una altura de unos 80 metros. And it happened whatever I never thought about. An object uh, was about 80 meters on top of us. It was something that no, no, none of us believed in it. And the object was there at the time they said, when they said Y las 20 personas que estábamos todos allí debajo del objeto captamos en nuestra mente que nos decían que no bajaban o no estábamos preparados. And the 20 people that were there um, capture in their mind a message saying that they're not coming down because you're not prepared. O sea, meses más tarde el objeto aterrizó ahí en el desierto y los vimos bajar físicamente a los tripulantes. Months later, the UFO landed and we saw the we saw them coming out of the UFO. It was quite Ahora, amazing. Si, si, no, si nos ponemos a pensar realmente de por qué nosotros, realmente yo diría que fue más por, por mi padre que por nosotros. He's saying that why us? I mean, we were so, uh, you know, unknown or whatever, but he, they, they, they then thought uh, maybe it was because of my dad instead of us. Porque porque mi padre realmente fue el que nos, el que nos abrió el camino, nos abrió la mente. Because my dad was the one who opened the path, opened our minds uh, into this. Y él fue el que llamó a la prensa para que este, supieran que nosotros habíamos llegado a tener un contacto. And he was the one calling the press to tell and let them know what they have had, that they make contact. With the el prestigio de él fue lo que llevó a que nos tomaran en serio y periodistas extranjeros vinieran y nos acompañaran al desierto y vieran que el contacto era real. His prestige was so serious that they believed what he said. So the press then later on came to the desert to corroborate what they had been saying, that the contact was real. Wow. Cuando nosotros vimos bajar a estos seres del interior de la nave, nos sorprendimos al ver los similares que eran a nosotros. When these beings were coming out of the UFOs, we were surprised uh, on how similar they are to us, like, you know, humanoid form. Pero en ese momento entendimos que no es que ellos se parezcan a nosotros, sino que somos nosotros los que nos parecemos a ellos. But it's not that uh, we look like them, but the other way around. Uh, yeah. It's the other way around, what they said, so... So here's a question. When was this incident and how old were you? ¿Cuándo fue este incidente y qué edad tenías? Tenía 18 años en, en ese momento y eso ocurrió en 1974. He was 18 years of age, 1974. Wow. <laughs> Very young. No, no teníamos ni la, ni la preparación, ni la formación, ni la madurez para, para valorar lo que estaba ocurriendo. Estaba pasando todo muy rápido. 
We didn't have the preparation, the maturity. Everything was happening so fast that we couldn't believe it. Too yeah. rapid. Era demasiado fácil, demasiado rápido, de, demasiado fluido. Y, y por the, eso the, eh, mi padre también le resultó difícil entender, ¿no? Por, por qué nosotros y no él, ¿no? Uh, for them was like so easy and then his dad would say, was saying this is unfair how come i've been working all these years on this and <laughs> who end up having contact is my sons you know so how unfair is this entonces lo que ellos explicaban es que mi padre tenía muchos condicionamientos mucha estructura mental mientras que nosotros éramos como un libro en blanco so that was so structured you know um but but they were so open minded and let it everything flow so i guess everything happened and it worked so so these beings um they looked just like us or what, what about the clothes wrong. they were wearing la apariencia del primer ser que vimos oxal era de un metro ochenta su rostro ligeramente más ancho que el nuestro eh, rasgos orientales parecía un coreano un mongol un oriental it's over five feet uh almost uh, two meters Um, his face was a little bit wider and he looked more like Oriental. Uh, his eyes were a little bit, you know, slanted and he would be like uh, somebody from, from, from China or something. Amazing. Sí. Y, alguien que si nosotros viéramos caminando en la calle, nos parecería un turista oriental fuerte, robusto, corpulento, alto, pero que podría pasar desapercibido. That if we see them walking on the streets, we would just think it's, it's, it's a tourist from, you know, um, from, uh, from China, from there, but very uh, well fit, you know? He was very robust, well, well fit. How close did he come to them? In other words, were they... Este, eh, podríamos decir, a un metro de distancia. A meter? A meter. Wow. So, yeah. from your elbow yeah. to your tip of your finger. Amazing. Y en esa primera, en esa primera ocasión, este, la nave estaba a cierta altura y proyectó como una especie de domo luminoso que ellos le llaman Sendra, que es como un portal the ship, dimensional. The ship came close to us and they were so close that they opened up what's called a dome and they call mm -hmm. it Sendra, the special dome, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, it can do a lot. You can cross it and you can be somewhere else or you can experiment a very spiritual, uh, you know, uh, experience. Yeah, this is what I think Dolly calls the light gate because Dolly has had many experiences as well. Interdimensional door. Interdimensional door. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes. Correct. That's the name of our show, the light gate. Yes, sí. yes, yes. Y él nos invitó a entrar a través de la luz y aparecimos como a 600 millones de kilómetros de distancia de la Tierra a una de las lunas de Júpiter. He invited us to cross the light. And uh, when we did, we crossed 600 um, a million uh, miles across. We ended up in one of the moons of uh, Jupiter to Ganymede. Hmm. Y estuvimos that, that is, cuatro o yeah. cinco días allá. Yeah. He's been there like four or five days so there. Yeah. But when so he came back, the, only 10 minutes have gone by. Yep, yeah. that's the first planet that I was taken to. Uh, not Jupiter, it's Saturn, but then I was taken to Jupiter afterwards. The moons are unique there, and yeah, yes. it's a big deal. Yep. So they, did they take you into a base then? On the, ¿Te the base? Base? Sí, sí. Sixto? Ellos han adaptado la vida de forma artificial en las lunas de Júpiter. Entonces, sus ciudades se extienden bajo el suelo de, de las lunas de Júpiter. Mainly, they have developed their cities on the subsoil of, of, of Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter. So mainly the, the cities are uh, under. Y, este, y lo que ellos nos dijeron es que debajo del hielo de la superficie de Ganymes habían océanos tan grandes como lo de la Tierra. And under the ice, um, they would find a lot of water, just as much water as Earth has. Este, y que, um, o sea, decir eso hace 50 años atrás era ridículo, porque según los científicos, el único lugar con agua que se conocía era la Tierra. To say this 50 years ago was ridiculous. I mean, because before, uh, it was only thought about Earth being the only planet with water, and that's it. 
But uh, we'll all this was happening in 1974, 50 years ago. Hubo que esperar hasta el año 2015 que el telescopio espacial Hubble detectó océanos tan grandes como el de la Tierra debajo del hielo a la superficie de Ganímedes para confirmar lo que se había dicho. We had to wait until 2015 until the telescope Hubble would corroborate mm -hmm. this. In 2015, we so just corroborated nice. this. All this info was true. Well, so did you go alone, sister, or did you take other people with you? La primera vez, este, íbamos siete personas. The y first pronto, time it was seven of us. Y de pronto desaparecí y, es, y, y aparecí delante del domo, delante del ser y de la nave. And suddenly he disappeared and he was in front of this being and in front of the ship. Ellos no me vieron entrar dentro del domo de luz. They did not see him going into the dome. Pero me vieron salir de, de, del domo de luz. But they saw me coming out of it. Ya, yeah. y me preguntaron dónde había estado esos 15 minutos. So the friends told him, you know, where have you been this past 15 minutes? Yo, yo sentía y había percibido que eran por lo menos cinco días. And he thought it was at least five days that, has been, that he has been gone. Right. A las dos semanas, los siete, todos juntos, entramos al domo luminoso y vivimos una experiencia similar. Two weeks later, seven of them lived a very similar experience. Wow. Y, y 12 años después, ya no fue a través del domo luminoso, sino a través de la nave misma que proyectó un haz de luz y me absorbió, me llevó al interior de la nave, este, que los acompañé ellos fuera de aquí. And 12 years later, the ship itself projected a beam of light towards me. It lifted me up. It took me to the ship and they took me with them. Y esa experiencia la han vivido varios compañeros y compañeras de nuestro grupo a lo largo de estos 50 años. O sea, no he sido yo solo. And this experience has been repeated with other members of the group. It was not only me. Right. It would have been, yeah. Amazing. So what were some of the things they told you? I'm sure they sure. must have shared lots of information. Este, lo, lo, que ellos, lo que ellos me dijeron es que eh, nosotros somos siembra de vida extraterrestre. What they said to him is that we have been planted here. They've sown us here. Que somos semillas estelares. We are like seeds, stellar seeds, and they planted este, us here. Que este... Eh, que a lo largo de nuestra historia ha habido hibridación y mestizaje. They have been uh, miscegenation, uh, you know, ETs coming here, getting, uh, you know, having sex with our women. So there was a lot of, uh, this was a place of deportation. A lot of things happen here on Earth. Sí. Que, que a lo largo de su historia ha habido naufragios estelares, colonizaje extraterrestre. Colonization, uh, Beings getting lost, beings trying to experiment, beings trying to come and get stuff from here, from one reason or the other. Sixto will tell us later, but there's many ETs coming to Earth. Pero, pero lo, lo más extraño que ellos nos han dicho y nos lo han ido desarrollando poco a poco es que hay, existe un plan cósmico. What they have been telling us little by little is that uh, there is a cosmic plan. And they have been telling us this little by little. It's a lot of information, and we have that information. It's really called the Cosmic Plan, and we are part eh, of it. La, part que of la it. Tierra fue, fue seleccionada junto con otros siete planetas más, o sea, ocho en total, para llevar a cabo un proyecto muy especial. Earth was chosen among eight planets to do a very special project. Eh, somos como una especie de casa cuna o un jardín de infantes para ellos. Yes, we're like a, like a kindergarten, uh, you know, nice. uh, for them. They have que been living for many years. De, nice. que ellos están tratando de aprender o recordar cosas a través nuestro que ellos han olvidado o han descuidado en su proceso. Nice. Trying to learn or remember things that they forgot in their process. Correct. Pero, pero todavía lo más extraño que ellos nos dijeron es But que... But the more strange things that they've said... Es que nuestro planeta fue seleccionado porque nuestro planeta se murió hace 1200 millones de años. Our planet was chosen uh, even though it died um, 12 billion years ago. No, 1200. Oh, 1200. 
Uh, yep. Yes. Yep. We got hit. Was bad. Yeah. 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 Para los extraterrestres, el yeah. tiempo en el universo es como una espiral ascendente. Right. For the ETs, the time and space. We come back. Oh. We come back and go back and forth. Right. Yeah. Every yeah. 12,000 yeah. years now. Yep. En una de las curvas de la espiral, la Tierra murió. Se destruyó completamente. Spiral, Earth died. Producto de impactos meteóricos. Uh, meteor showers, due to meteor showers. Y producto también de pulsos de luz violeta que proceden pulses, del centro de la galaxia. Violet pulses coming from the center of the galaxy. Y cada 26,000 años llegan a nuestro sistema solar y generan todo tipo de mutaciones. Every 26,000 years comes to Earth. And it causes uh, a lot yeah. of mutations. Yeah, it, 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 it yeah, actually is 12,000 now. It's it's in the last uh, 326,000 years, it's sped up. So it's every 12,000 years now. And it's an electromagnetic current sheet that comes through. And it's on us right now, literally on us. Justamente, el momento en que nuevamente llegó este otro pulso, a partir del 21 de diciembre del 2012. So we are at that moment. So on the 21st of December yeah. of 2012, that's when a pulse came from the center of the galaxy. And that's why we're seeing all these changes and transformations right now. Entonces, un grupo de civilizaciones recibió la autorización para viajar a través del tiempo y del espacio. So a group of civilizations received the authorization to travel to time and space y vinieron a la tierra antes de que la tierra muriera and came to earth before earth got destroyed e and avoided that, that they avoided that to happen so they y traveled to earth momento, before it died y a partir de ese momento crearon un tiempo alternativo paradójico que se ha venido sen, que se ha venido trenzando con el real tiempo del universo and they created a different time like um, what was called alternative time so they were, we were here, and the real time was here. Y este, según esto, nosotros vivíamos hasta el 21 de diciembre del 2012, vivíamos en una paradoja espacio-temporal. So according to this, up until, that, up until that day, the 21st of December 2012, we were living in a different time, a paradoxical different time. Y, supuestamente un tiempo diferente que era irreconciliable jamás tendrían por qué conectarse ambos tiempos a different time there was never supposed to um, get together with the real time that was not the purpose so only for them to watch us and to learn what they forgot that was the purpose of this pero pero en contacto con nosotros las emociones las pasiones los sentimientos los han afectado gravemente a ellos but in contact with us all the emotions affected them a tal punto que ha habido extraterrestres que se han hecho adorar como dioses y han tomado pueblos completos como sus feudos particulares. Um, and also some of the ETs have um, also make them, you know, adore themselves. So they were playing like gods to us. And that was not, that was not right. Ya, yeah. y, y realmente eh, la idea era dar... No permitir que tuviéramos acceso a mucha información y a mucho conocimiento. The idea was for us not to get too much knowledge, too much uh, wisdom. Y que si nosotros avanzábamos más rápido de lo que ellos nos podían seguir, ellos nos reseteaban, nos hacían perder gran parte de lo avanzado. That if we move too fast learning, we started learning too fast, they will reset us again. So Pero, they will have that ability pero hubo extraterrestres que llegaron a sentir en, en una empatía muy especial por el ser humano. But there were extraterrestrials that were uh, feeling um, a lot of empathy with the, with the human being. Y nos dieron más información de la que nos correspondía. And they gave us more information that they were supposed to. Y otros tuvieron temor de nosotros, de que pudiéramos poner en peligro el orden cósmico. Others were afraid of us that we could alter the cosmic plan. Y eso generó eh, fricciones y guerras y conflictos muy graves entre ellos. That generated a lot of uh, conflicts among themselves, and they even fought uh, because of this. Son las guerras de los dioses que se mencionan en todos los mitos y leyendas de todas las culturas. 
and this is all the wars that is uh, mentioned in all the cultures and all the, uh, the, the, the the people that they talk about when the gods were fighting. It was because of that. Wow. Yes. I was taught the Anunnaki started it. And, uh, yeah, and uh, there was a lot going on after that because the Anunnaki are the ones that became over emotional okay, and, and started giving out information they wouldn't they weren't supposed to and they've been trying to rectify it ever since it, it was a mess. Los que fueron los anunnaki este lo que pasa es que los anunnaki son este eh, es, es como decir un grupo de civilizaciones de varios planetas no no solamente son seres de orión son seres de pleiades son seres de de arturus son son seres eh, que te digo de Alpha Centauro son de muchos lugares. The sí. Anunnaki are from many places. Alpha Centauro, um, yeah. many places. He just mentioned like three or four already. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, they're the oldest, one of the oldest races of the ET. They've been around. Dice, the uno de los más antiguos. Yeah. Por, por ejemplo, este, la mitología griega habla de que Prometeo no le entregó el fuego de los dioses al ser humano a pesar de que los dioses no estaban de acuerdo que esto se hiciera. The Greek mythology uh, talks about uh, Prometheus, ¿no es cierto Prometeo? Sí, Prometeo. Uh, has, has given the, the fire of knowledge to the human being. En la, en la mitología sumeria se dice de que eh, Inanna o Istar o Astarte eh, roba las tablillas me como una especie de ordenadores ya de Enki para entregárselo a los sumerios de Uruk. Inanna o Estarte also steals some tablets with great information, a lot of information uh, to give it to the Sumerians. Sí, o sea que eh, podríamos decir que ellos son nuestro pasado y nosotros en past. cierta medida somos su futuro. We in some uh, sense we are their future. De los extraterrestres. Wow. Of the extraterrestrials. Porque de alguna manera es la proyección que ellos este, esperaban alcanzar. La que hoy In some way we're the projection of what they went, wanted to, to become. Lo que pasa es que hay fuerzas de oposición enquistadas aquí en el planeta tratando de que el ser humano no despierte conciencia. Think of it is that here on Earth there are forces that try for the human being not to remember. And those Correct. forces are acting right now. For us, not exactly. For the last 80 years, it has been <laughs> vile. Yes. They have y esas, esas fuerzas de oposición son extraterrestres mismos que fueron deportados y exiliados a la Tierra por mal comportamiento. And that opposition force is uh, produced by extraterrestrials that have been deported to Earth for bad behavior. And they are causing this. Mm. Wow. Okay. We have gone far and beyond the expectations. Um, have they told Sisto of uh, an upcoming calamity that's serious on the planet? Have have they they have they una calamidad que puede pasar en el planeta? Este, cada cada 26 mil años, con ese pulso de luz violeta emitido por el centro de la galaxia, se generan todo tipo de mutaciones y cambios. El cambio climático es consecuencia de ese pulso. Every 26,000 years, that pulse coming from the center of the galaxy causes all this. All this uh, weather changes, it's not caused by man. It's, 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 it's mm -hmm. the pulsation coming from the center of the galaxy. That's what's mm -hmm. causing the global warming right now. Yeah, um, cuando, cuando I am, nosotros... I'm taught from very small girl to now about science and astronomy and physics and the physical planes of the planets and how they all interact with each other in the entire universe. And the pulse that you're talking about is an electromagnetic current sheet. And it has um, been my job, I guess, I took this on to come here and talk about it and what is happening to earth because it's not it's really only 12,000 years and it's ignited our sun to change its polarity 
and every single planet in our solar system is now changing their polarity. We're in the middle of it. Our poles are excursioning, they're changing. And it's a buildup of energy that will accumulate in the sun micronova. And when that happens, our entire planet is going to flop over again. It flops back and forth every time this happens. And it, it's a wild event that no human being on this planet, if you're present for it, will survive. And they always come back and take everybody off that they can get off the planet to bring back later. This is the cycle. Okay? And I don't know how much it is. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, o sea, lo que, tenemos que, sí, lo que tenemos que entender es que lo único que se mantiene constante en el universo es el cambio. Lo único que tenemos que entender es que todo lo que está realmente on Earth mm -hmm. is change. There's always change. Yeah. Nothing stays no still. Tierra, el universo. Not no. only Earth, it's the universe. Correct. Y este, a decir hace 50 años atrás que del centro de la galaxia este, llegaba un pulso de luz violeta era una reverenda tontería porque según los científicos en el centro de la galaxia había una, un agujero negro supermasivo y de un agujero negro nunca salía nada. 50 years ago, it would have been dumb to say this because um, how would they understand that this pulse was coming from the center of the galaxy? They would say there's only a black hole, and from a black hole, nothing comes out, nothing can come out. That's what hubo they would be saying. Hubo que esperar hasta noviembre del año 2010 que el we telescopio espacial November. Fermi de rayos gamma detectó el pulso de luz violeta emitido por el centro de la galaxia. 2010? 2010, noviembre del 2010. November of, of 2010. Uh, this satellite uh, captured that uh, pulse coming from the center of the galaxy, corroborating what they have said in 1974. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The governments of the world have actually known about it, and they've lied to everybody. They kept it quiet. They've said nothing. Stephen Hawking declared that this obligaba a to que revisar qué es lo que realmente hay en el centro de las galaxias y cómo se comportan los supuestos agujeros negros. Uh, Stephen Hawking was saying also that we need to investigate further the center of the galaxies and how they behave, how this right. is affecting us. Right. Sí. Entonces, esa, esa radiación, este, ya los guías extraterrestres nos habían advertido que iba a generar todo tipo de cambios y mutaciones en el Sol y en todo el sistema solar, porque no solamente la Tierra está registrando cambios, todo el sistema solar. That radiation coming from the center of the galaxy is not affecting not only Earth, but the whole solar system. Every everybody's Correct. getting affected. Yeah, this is exactly, exactly what Dolly has been saying for a very long time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Las mutaciones se están dando en Júpiter, se están dando en Saturno, en Neptuno, All Plutón. Of them. Yes. Todos están cambiando. Mutations are happening in Jupiter and Neptuno, and uh, all these planets yes. are being Uranus, affected as well. They're changing Correct. colors as well. Lo interesante es que los seres humanos somos capaces de crear una masa crítica. O sea, que si muchas personas nos unimos con una misma intención, podemos crear un estado mental colectivo positivo y podemos atenuar los cambios. We can create a critical mass if we get together a bunch of people and um, we pray for something not to happen, we can make changes. This has happened before. Uh, I don't know if Six is going to uh, cite any examples, but if we get together, the critical mass is able to um, make all these impacts less traumatic. In el año in el año 2015, se venía el huracán Patricia por el Océano Pacífico. 2015, uh, Hurricane Patricia came from the Pacific Ocean. Era grado siete. A grade seven. O sea, lo máximo que llegaban los huracanes era grado 5. The maximum was grade 5. This was going to be a 7. O sea, vientos entre 175 y 220 kilómetros por hora. 75 knots per hour. Y aparece un, hura, un huracán que venía con vientos de 300 a 400 kilómetros por hora. And this hurricane had uh, from 300 to 400 kilómetros por hour the speed. Se pensaba que iba a destruir todo el Pacífico Mexicano. He was going to destroy the whole Pacific from uh, Mexico. Y la gente en México se unió y mucha gente del extranjero también con meditaciones, oraciones y, y, y el prayed. huracán tocó tierra y se convirtió en tormenta tropical y no pasó nada. 
when the hurricane touched the earth, stopped spinning as, as, as strong as it was, and it changed into a tropical storm. Nothing happened. Sí. Wow. Recientemente acaba de haber un huracán grado 5 que ha destruido Acapulco. Recently, a grade 5 hurricane just destroyed Acapulco. Pero el problema fue que el gobierno dijo, tranquilos, que, que no es was, nada importante y no va a pasar nada. But the government said, don't worry, nothing's going to happen, don't worry. No, so people not. were taken by surprise. Our son is yeah. hopping off coronal mass ejections at a very high rate now. And because our magnetosphere around the planet is down 40%, uh, the uh, energy coming in hits the earth, the earth is an electromagnetic circuit with the sun and it releases back toward the sun. And that's why the weather is so bad, really, really bad. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse as we go along because the sun is in solar maximum right now and it is popping off every day. All the earthquakes in the Atlantic Ridge right now are exactly the reason for that. We've had major solar storms. We've had major CMEs for the last two weeks and it is now amping up the problem and it's because our magnetosphere is not strong enough to repel that energy coming at us and it's only going to get worse that's what's happening exactly que las emanaciones del sol están veniendo con mucha fuerza y está afectando pues a todos los planetas incluido claro. la tierra lo, lo que pasa es que el sol tiene ciclos de 11 años the sun has yeah. cycles of 11 years right yeah. and we're at the top we have just entered the top of the strongest cycle ever Estamos en la parte más de la cúspide, dice ella. Estos ciclos se han visto incrementados por la misma radiación que está viniendo del centro de la galaxia. The cycles have been increased because of this radiation coming from the center of the galaxy. Right, because so the sun, just... it's amped up the sun. That's exactly correct. Yeah. We're in the yeah. electromagnetic current sheet and it's amped our sun up. It's made it even Entonces, more. Entonces, la, la yeah. energía del sol más la energía del centro de la galaxia right. están haciendo right. que el planeta se hinche. Que la Tierra se hinche. Right. So, yeah. this energy coming from the center of the galaxy plus the uh, energy coming from the sun is making the Earth uh, get, get swollen. It's, it's, it's getting swollen right now. Ya, entonces la presión interna hace que el magma salga por todos lados y por eso está viendo mucha actividad volcánica. Right. So, the internal pressure is making all these volcanoes going off. Correct. Uh, Ali, because uh, our, our surface... The surface of the earth is the mantle is breaking free from all the friction of it and all that grinding friction is causing heat from the center of the earth as well from all that energy and now it's outwards and it's loosed up it's swollen up our mantle and it's grinding and it's causing all of the volcanoes you're exactly right yep. yeah y, y, y precisamente toda esa radiación está afectando el campo magnético terrestre reduciéndolo al mínimo calentando la atmósfera derritiendo los glaciares, derritiendo los polos, aumentando el nivel de agua dulce en los océanos, y siempre existe el peligro de una nueva glaciación. This radiation is um, making the magnetic fields smaller, and that's why the poles are, are melting, and we could end up having another glaciation, where everything Correct. changes dramatically again. Right. Yeah. yeah, we, we uh, have a, at the, uh, up in the north, part of our planet, the top of the planet, the north side. Uh, we have an, all that melt now has caused an engine that keeps all of us warm to stop. It's failed, it's failed. And the oceans are cooling off. And that is, means we're going to go back to an ice age. It's the cycle of repeating. And we're headed now, this year, it's going to start. And you'll see no, no more El Niños, no more La Niña, nothing. It's all going to go cold. And we will see bad, bad winters because of this. You will also see what they call thunder snow, lightning everywhere because of it. it. We already have more lightning now than anybody in our lifetime has ever seen. And it's going to go through the winter like that as well. It's, it's getting crazy. Lo que no tenemos que hacer es dejarnos arrastrar por el miedo, ni por el fatalismo, ni el pesimismo. Right. What we should not let happen is um, us ourselves be negative and um, believe in all this negative information that we're getting, and uh, right. we'll make well, us they, drag we ourselves be into together. this right. negative arena. Right. And we should not do that because we can also make changes for this not to be as traumatic I as agree. possible. 
We mm-hmm. need to wake up. We need to start using our abilities. We need to hook up with one another. We need to create um, a force of ourselves. And we have to stop letting the governments tell us what to do. They enslave all of us with all of their politics and all of that. And they frighten people. People are taught to be afraid. We are under the gun because they have an agenda that we shouldn't allow, period. And worldwide, there are enough of us. If we wake up, we join together. And like you said, no negativity. We need to be positive about helping ourselves. And that's what it means. And I've said this to Preston a million times. If we all woke up exactly the same time together and started this, the world would change in a day, literally in a day. Love is the answer. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. So I have a question I, I would love to ask you, Sisto. Um, I read about an experience that you had up in Sabago Cabins, New York, where you visited there, t- called down UFOs, created a Zendra. People all around the area saw the UFOs, not just the group. But one gentleman was a dancer who was suffering from arthritis in his legs. And he says he was healed. And I wonder if you've had any other experiences involving people who've been healed. Entendiste la pregunta? De un centro en Nueva York, donde una persona que tenía problemas con las piernas y fue que se curó a través de supuestamente el centro. Si tienes alguna otra experiencia acerca de eso. O sea, realmente ellos, eh, los extraterrestres, han hecho algunas sanaciones en diversas partes del mundo. O sea, no es lo fundamental a lo que ellos se dirigen, pero cuando ellos han podido intervenir, lo han hecho. The ETs have done it. They have cured people, but that's, that's not their main purpose. Right. They have done it. They can do it, but that is not their main purpose. Sixo is repeating that. So what sí, is, this is not the only person. But, no, you know, si no imaginémonos la, la lista, o sea, la fila interminable de personas que se pondrían... Este, pendientes de, de sanaciones de ese tipo, ¿no? O sea, serían, how many more people would be making the big line to get cured, you know? Miles de veces <laughs> la gente que va a Lourdes o a Fátima, ¿no? Would be yes. thousands of people, like people are going to Lourdes o Fátima, you know? Right. So we, what would be the main purpose, purpose then? Either. Yeah. We have karma. We, we don't learn that way. We have to, this is the hard road we're living here, you know? We're, we're supposed to be learning. We're supposed to be educating ourselves. We're supposed to be raising up in wisdom and understanding instead of fighting and acting like idiots. And if you give everybody the candy, it doesn't teach them anything. And that would be one of the things that they wouldn't automatically do on literally, they have healed people. Yeah. Lo importante es que la enseñanza y el conocimiento que ellos transmiten es que, eh, que el ser humano es como una esponja. Una esponja cuando está exprimida tiene una forma definida y no tiene peso y tiene un color claro. The teaching that they're giving us is um, they're telling us that we're like a sponge and if we absorb all the negativity, uh, right. we're going to start falling down in pieces because of that. We need to stay clean and um, become a better person. Correct. Sí, cuando, uno, cuando, cuando uno va absorbiendo el agua se torna la esponja oscura, amorfa y pesada. Y si te demoras en exprimirla, se pudre y se cae a pedacitos. When you absorb que... the water and you take sí. too long to um, to uh, expel the water, it would start falling out, you know, into pieces. Sí. Entonces, lo que enferma al ser humano son los sentimientos de culpa, los resentimientos, los rencores, los miedos, las dudas. Mm-hmm all these um, feelings, um, negative feelings of, um, you know, thinking that you have been doing wrong, all these negative feelings is what really affects the human being. We need to stop that. We need to um, to change that. Sí. Entonces, uno tiene que aprender a exprimirse de todo eso porque antes que se enferme el cuerpo, se enferma la mente y antes el alma. Before, listo despacio, before we get sick, first, primero se enferma qué? Primero, antes que se, antes que se enferme el cuerpo, se enferma la mente. Our mind. It's antes que se enferme tu cuerpo, se enferma tu mente y antes tu alma. Your mind starts getting, you know, sick first. So we need to change exactly. that from here, from our head. Y, y antes de eso, tu alma. Exactly. And before that, our soul does. Yeah. 
Entonces, uno tiene que, que, que exprimirse de toda esa negatividad ya para no enfermarse, para no materializar o somatizar enfermedades. We need to clean ourselves and, you know, clean all that sponge and exp expel all that wa water before it turns dark and heavy and makes us sick, you know? Yep. So, exactly. so he here is a question, you know, healing, they do, but, but you said it's not their main purpose. What is their main purpose? Why are they ¿Cuál es contacting su, us? ¿Cuál es su motivo principal? Si dices que no es curar, uno de sus eh, 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 maneras principales de, de, de trabajar. O sea... La motivación principal de ellos es curarse ellos. The main um, thing for them is for them to cure themselves. O sea, o sea curarse de, de ese estancamiento evolutivo, de ese um, de haber dejado de lado en su momento eh, las emociones, los sentimientos, las pasiones para haberse tornado totalmente mentales y tecnológicos. They became too mental and technological. So what they need to do is relearn what they forgot. Feelings. So they need that that that's hard for them, but they they are doing this watching us too. So they need to remember all that. Entonces nosotros somos su vacuna. So we are like their um, you know, their medicine in in, in a way. La, la vacuna <laughs> Like a shot, you know, like a injection. I mean, yeah. you can change them. You can change them. I I was raised to understand that they are, as you say, our progenitors. They're our parents. Okay, we are their children, and we are here learning. They put us here. They love us. Um, but things happen even here, where you know you're you become you become the parent of the parent. In other words, there are things that we have to do to help them as well. And uh, that's where we're at, pretty much. We're helping each other. Lo, lo, lo nosotros somos como unos alumnos aventajados. Mm -hmm. We are advantageous. We are students. Uh, uh, you know, we have that advantage. But we need right. to know this, to believe in this, and not be right. distracted yeah. with other things that are, you know, worthless. With many people. Correct. Are Absolutely. Absolutely. Ellos pensaban que a través nuestro iban a encontrar la vía que les permitiera salir de una suerte de estancamiento evolutivo. So they thought that through us, they could uh, become unstuck because they were stuck for so many years. But through us, learning what they forgot, feelings, they would solve their problems. Pero lo que nosotros hemos conseguido es que el tiempo real del universo y el tiempo alternativo se acerquen y terminen integrándose en un solo tiempo. What we have done is that both times, the alternative time and the real time, we get, we get closed and become into one time, one real time, both together. They were never supposed yeah. to, but... Uh, That's what they want. Un... You're describing it. Yeah, they want us to join back. Yeah. The only way we can do that is if we open our mind. Yes. We, we, we create a, a third time. Creamos un tercer tiempo. Sí, sí. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'd like to bring up a picture. Um, one of the things I love about your case, Sisto, is that you're able to bring so many people together, and sometimes the UFOs will show up, and you have good evidence that your so story is true. That yeah. happened two weeks ago. Sí, oh, really? eso ha sido al, al pie del volcán Iztaccíhuatl, este, cerca de la Ciudad de México. Wow. Close to the city of Mexico and close to the volcano Iztaccíhuatl. Sí. Y, este, y la, la nave apareció desde temprano en la mañana, desde las nueve y media de la mañana, estuvo a plena luz del día encima nuestro y todo, y durante el día y, y la tarde y todo, siguió apareciendo una, aparecía otra. Since nine o'clock in the morning, all day long, the ships were showing up. You can see that first picture right there with the red arrow. It was like nine, nine thirty in the morning. No, es, esta ya es de la tarde, esta es de la tarde. Hay otra que es anterior, que es de la mañana temprano. Ok, so this is from the afternoon, he says. There's another one from the morning. Well, all right. And for those who are just listening on the radio, we're seeing a group of people in a field meeting with Sisto, and there's a UFO hovering over a mountain. And with the blow-up pictures, you can see it in quite some detail. It's fascinating that you've been able to get so, many, so much evidence of your contacts. Bringing so many video? people together. Yeah. Do you have video of it? 
Sí, hay, hay este video también de todo eso. We also have videos, yes we do. I would love to see them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all right. Okay, keep going, person. <laughs> um, well, I've got plenty other pictures. Uh, but it's gonna, oh, here's, here's another picture, which is kind of interesting. Ese es justamente el objeto que fue avistado este, a las nueve y media de la mañana. This is sol. the one that was shown at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. Okay, let's see. To, todos lo estábamos viendo ahí. Estuvo más de una hora en el lugar. We saw it for more than an hour. All right, so there's, I've got plenty of pictures of... Ya, y esta es otra salida. Ya, esto fue la semana pasada. En, this is another ya, outing en, that was the, the week prior. En la rumorosa en la, en el, al norte de México. En la rumorosa en north of Mexico. Oh, sí. all right. That must be a close-up. All right. Well, we need to take a quick station break. And I just want to let everyone know that you are watching The Light Gate. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Preston Dennett. My lovely co-host is Dolly Safran. Mm -hmm. Our guest tonight is Sisto Paswells, an explorer, an author, contactee, presenter, a man of many talents. Also joining us is Cesar Retigi. I hope I got that right. <laughs> uh, he is helping to translate. So I very much appreciate you joining us tonight. And well. we are streaming live on United Public Radio Network at 107.7 from the beautiful city of New Orleans. Also the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3 FM. Also, of course, on YouTube and Roku and Facebook. So thank you very much. We're just in the middle of Sisto sharing his many amazing experiences and the information he has learned. He has over 20 books, close to 30 now, and we'll be flashing some of those on the screen. So many of them are translated into different languages, including English. And in the show description, we have a, a link to Sisto's website, so you can definitely learn more information and see some of his amazing evidence. Okay, thank you. Need to take that quick station break, but I know you have got so much to share. So I'll just let you tell, you know, maybe share some of your more amazing experiences or some of the more information you've learned, what you feel is important for people to know. Compártenos más, Sixto. Dice, you want him to do that now or? Yes, please. Sí, por yes. favor, Sixto. Sí. Eh, la, la, la primera vez que los acompañé a ellos físicamente dentro de una nave, ellos me llevaron a una ciudad donde habían 12.000 personas que han sido extraídas de la Tierra en los últimos 300 años. The first time they took me away, um, Physically, they took me to this place where there were 12,000 terrestrials there. Gente que ha sido rescatada de lugares como el Triángulo de Bermudas o el Triángulo del Dragón del Pacífico o en medio de guerras y conflictos. People that have been um, taken uh, away, like from the Bermuda Triangle or the other places like that, and they have been taken to 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 their uh, bases in Jupiter. Oh, wow. Sí. Y esa gente está siendo preparada para, estaba siendo preparada para ser de vuelta a nuestro mundo. And these people have been being prepared to be um, sent back to our world later on. And this is happening right now, by the way. Con un mayor nivel de conciencia para ser infiltrada, para ayudar al despertar de conciencia y la liberación de información. To help us awake with a better, higher conscious, they're coming back to help us remember. So they are going into very special places right now. Y este, y esto es a partir de agosto del 87 que han empezado a darse tantos cambios porque toda esta gente está accediendo a medios de comunicación, a puestos de poder, se está infiltrando para ayudar a que se libere información. Y todo lo que está pasando en la actualidad es consecuencia ya de ese de esa quinta columna de gente trabajando en la liberación de información. 
since August of 87, these people have been uh, returned here to Earth to very special places. Um, you know, we know of some already, but uh, they have been returned already since 87. Amazing. Yeah, I've always often wondered what happened to some of the missing people. And I know a few cases where people have come back and said that, yeah, they were taken by ETs. Gente, gente que, que desapareció hace 50, 70, 100 años atrás y, y no ha envejecido nada. Y, y tiene have, realmente una, una función o una tarea específica. People who have disappeared 50, 70, 100 years ago, they're coming back with a new mind, with a new way of uh, influencing into others right now. Y, sin, y que no ha envejecido nada. And they have not aged at all. Very interesting. Well, can we bring up some questions from chat? Would you be willing to answer some questions? Perfect, perfect. Yes, perfect. Right. Yeah, he's ready. Great. And we've always said any questions are OK. So some of them might be a little strange. But if you can't answer it, that's fine. Um, here is a question from Michael Kennedy, who is wondering if you have any insight on the Peruvian mummies that have been in the news recently. Uh, ¿Qué nos puedes decir acerca de las momias que han estado en los noticieros últimamente, Sixto? Que todo, que todo eso es un fraude. Un It's fraude fraud. en YouTube. It's a main fraud. Don't believe in it. Right. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> My opinion also. I've been trying to tell pure, people that it's a fraud. Yes. Pure economical. No. The money is moving this. Don't believe in that. Right. right. All right. Very interesting because I was kind of on the fence about it. <laughs> Here's a question from Central Wisconsin, and he is asking, are the ETs on Jupiter in order to keep an eye on us here on Earth, or is their base there for reasons not connected to us here on Earth? Not Su base exactly sure. en Júpiter, Sixto, eh, ¿es para que nos echen un ojo desde allí hacia la Tierra, o es que su base de ellos es, es estar ahí por razones que no están conectadas con nosotros en la Tierra. Lo, lo que pasa es que eh, tienen que mantener también cierta distancia para que eh, la parte emocional nuestra no los afecte tanto que ellos no lo puedan digerir, controlar y todo. El, el hecho de llevar gente de la Tierra allí es como para ir dosificando la relación y la conexión con la humanidad y con lo que la humanidad puede aportar. They need to be careful because they've taken people from Earth, but the feelings is what really moved them. But they need to control themselves because for them to try to remember the feelings they 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 forgot, they got to go easy because if not, they they cannot manage it. All right. Now here's a question. I don't know if you can answer. Um, Sisto, but I'm going to ask anyway. It's from Allison. How about the Ashtar Command Base near Jupiter? Did you see that? Ashtar Command is another contactee. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Sí. ¿Conoces esta persona, Sisto? Ashtar. Sí, Ashtar Sheran es eh, el, como el almirante de la flota de, de la Confederación de Mundos. De, o sea, de todos los mundos más evolucionados de esta galaxia. He agrees and he knows them and is a higher up uh, being um, and, and that is uh, keeping in order this, this part of the galaxy. Yes, it, o sea, it, does, it does exist. Él es procedente de Alpha y Centauro. He's from Alpha Centauro. Un planeta de Alpha y Centauro. Ya. Yeah. Es un ser muy alto, nórdico, pero muy big, alto. Being, a very big, big, tall being. Estamos yeah. hablando de más de dos metros de altura. Uh, more than two meters. We're talking, I don't know, yeah. six feet maybe. Pero, pero lamentablemente hay mucha gente que equivocadamente cree que es como, que es el Arcángel San Miguel, o que lo confunde con cualquier otra cosa. Es una, es un extraterrestre, es una persona. It's an extraterrestre, but many people uh, confuse him with, with an Archangel or something like that. That is, that is not right. This person is, a, is an extraterrestre, no, no, no angel at all. Oh, wow. o sea, el problema nuestro es que tendemos a divinizar a los seres, ¿no? We tend to do that. We think they're angels, and, and that's not the case. This happened for so many years, and uh, 
We need to put things where they are. This is not an angel. Yes, I had a case yes. where an ET told a lady that who el, you thought we were sea, angels. Sí, el que se haya confundido a los extraterrestres con ángeles no significa que no existan los ángeles como tales, pero no son seres materiales, son seres de otros planos y otras dimensiones. So to think they're angels obviously is not right, but that does not mean there are beings also that are not ETs. They can have other forms. Uh, they're not angels, but they have other forms as well. Right. There, there are a lot of people mistake light beings. They're interdimensional beings and they look like light and they will show a part of what they could look like, you know, humanoid, but they're perfectly see-through and they think they're angels and they're not. They're light beings. They're mostly right. not corporeal. They Generalmente, can... los seres que buscan el contacto mm -hmm. directo con nosotros son los que más se parecen a nosotros. The beings who made uh, contact with us are the beings that resemble like us more so. They're yeah. the ones that are going to make contact o, with o, us. O también los que pueden asumir una apariencia como la nuestra. Muchas or, veces no son so, Or also they can assume they can look like us. They're not like porque, us, but they can make themselves appear like us. Sí, porque ellos saben que nosotros juzgamos por las apariencias. Y si vemos a alguien diferente, vamos a pensar que es malo, simplemente pues distinto. Because they know we judge by the appearance. And uh, if we okay. see him too different, we probably won't be trusting it. So they change their appearance. So then we can, you know, uh, be calmed and, uh, and go forward. Well, that's o sea, a good... He, he tenido la oportunidad de ver a seres tan extraños. Tan He's extraños. got the opportunity to see beings so, so different. So yeah. strange, yeah. Y, y, y sin embargo, sentir de ellos una sabiduría y una presencia realmente muy destacada, muy, muy importante. But I also felt from these beings a wisdom that was incredible. They looked different, but their wisdom was amazing. Yes. Well, well I'm interested. What? How different did they look? ¿Cuán diferentes se miraban? Imaginemos nosotros como si fuera un costal de patatas. Yeah. Sin forma alguna, sin piernas, sin pies, solamente como si fuese un bulto. Imagine ourselves like if we are seeing a bag of potatoes without forms. Yeah. Yeah. No form sí, sin piernas, sin, sin brazos, sin, sin rostro, simplemente no era como, como si fuera no un arms. bulto. Like, like, yeah, mm -hmm. shapeless, pretty much. Y sin embargo, wow. sentías tú, tú que estabas ante la presencia de un maestro, de alguien muy sabio. You would feel next to him that you were in front of a master. Somebody Pero so no sabías por dónde empezaba o por dónde terminaba. You didn't even know where he would start or finish. You didn't even know how, where, where to look at him. Nice. But it was like mm -hmm. a bag of potatoes, like a big, big bag of potatoes. Well, here's, here's another question, which kind of is related to that. This is from Guy Merritt, mm -hmm. and he is asking... Are there extraterrestrials in human form and in positions of power on this planet? ¿Hay algunos extraterrestres en forma sí, sí. humana que puedan estar? O sea, hay extraterrestres, pero no en puestos de poder, simplemente extraterrestres este, infiltrados también en nuestro mundo, evaluando realmente el proceso de evolución de la humanidad. Yes, there are, but not in a positions of power. They are just among themselves trying to learn how we live, how we feel, but not, you know, in a high up a government position, no. Oh, well. Okay, I want to bring up a picture and just give a shout out to Martin Rivera, who helped set up this show. I know he's <laughs> um, your friend, Sisto, and he has witnessed encounters with Sisto in his retreats. So I just want to thank you, Martin, for your help. and setting up this interview. So, sorry, I have yes. to... <laughs> All right. Now, here is another question. Um, here, let me get rid of this one here. And uh, <laughs> here is a question from Central Wisconsin. What is it at the center of the galaxy that's causing this magnetic pulsing? ¿Entiendes esto? Sí. 
Este, según los extraterrestres, en el centro de la galaxia no hay un agujero negro supermasivo, sino que hay una estrella supermasiva que funciona como un portal dimensional. There is no a black hole in the center of the galaxy, but there is a, uh, a star, supermassive star. Right. Um, pero, right. pero que es una estrella supermasiva que este, funciona como un portal dimensional y And genera esos like de a, uh, like a portal and it creates those pulses that is affecting us right now. Por eso ya ahorita los científicos están hablando incluso de un agujero blanco. That's why scientists now are talking about not a black hole but a white hole. It's actually a quasar. It's the biggest quasar you could possibly imagine. Yeah, like it's one of quasars. Yeah, it's a giant quasar. Yep. And it pulses it rotates like this and its poles wobble like this and it sends energy out in every direction because the poles don't stay this way or that way they it like does a circle eight but it's rotating and any which way the pole is aimed it sends out a pulse throughout the galaxy and it can shoot anywhere in the galaxy from its turning and yep it causes electromagnetic current sheets that's what the energy is that it shoots at us And it doesn't just affect us, it affects everything between that center of the universe all the way through to us. So it's not just our galaxy that's being uh, impacted by it, it's every galaxy between us and the center of the galaxy. And it's major. And yeah. And they're very well aware of what it's happening. Yeah. Wow. Está hablando que afecta a muchas galaxias también estos pulsos, Sixto. Sí, claro. All right, here's another question, which is very interesting. It's from Arcadia. And she says, hello, Sisto. Have you been introduced to a group of ETs, like a galactic federation or some kind of positive ETs? And are they in our solar system? There's a lot of talk about galactic federation. So I'm curious about your thoughts on that. Entiende, Sisto? Bueno, prim primeramente, nosotros todavía no formamos parte de la Confederación de Mundos. O sea, la Confederación de yet. Mundos de nuestra galaxia agrupa a todos los mundos más evolucionados en capacidad de ayudar a otros. We are not yet part of this group of uh, worlds that are in the capacity of helping other worlds. We're not there yet. Right. Pero I was taught that they don't call it a galactic federation. Those are our words, but, not theirs. Yeah. But one day we will, he says. Yeah, it's a it's a, a consensus, and it's run by the smartest of them, the most wise, and it it trickles down in authority to them, and it's all consensus. They don't have a person in power that's elected like like in a federation like we have. It's all consensus among them, and they adhere to it very strictly. They're very very advanced, and this is a better way to behave than to hire somebody and give them full reign without permission on any, everybody else. That's what I was taught. All right. So here's another interesting question from Doxy. Doxy, and she's asking, Sisto, how do they choose who to take and who to contact? Ellos, ellos seleccionan a la gente con la que desean contactarse y quién los va a contactar. They choose who to contact and who's going to be contacted. Pero, pero no porque tal o cual persona sea mejor que el resto. But not because this person is better than the others. Sino porque ellos saben que a través de ciertas personas pueden llegar a un colectivo mucho más amplio. But because they know that through these people they can get to uh, a much broader, uh, you know, uh, public. De, de, ¿De qué le serviría tener contacto con alguien que vive la experiencia y por el tema del ridículo o el desprestigio o el miedo se guarda el contacto para ella. Why would they have an experience with somebody who, because he's afraid, would not say anything and it'll be a waste of time. So they they know who to contact and um, and when to do it. O sea, eh, buscan personas que de, de tener la experiencia del contacto no los traumatice, no los afecte negativamente. They look for people that uh, this will not affect them or traumatize them uh, because of the experience. Wow, very interesting. Okay, here's another question, which I'm quite curious what your answer would be on this one. This is from Doxy, and she's asking, Sisto Paz, 
First, thank you for coming forth with this information. And then she asks, has ET told you if and when they're coming back to Earth and why? First of all, they never left. <laughs> I know I'm teaching everybody differently. I teach yeah. them differently than that. Um, there's reasons why I say what I say. Um, because our magnetosphere is down and we have energy punching our solar system so badly right now. It's derazzing our DNA. It's causing all kinds of problems. The way they fly, the way the craft fly here, uh, we have electromagnetic field guidelines on this planet from the core. Okay, And they fly on those guidelines around our planet and throughout our solar system. And it's gotten so bad now they can't handle crashing anymore and they've left. And what I'm teaching is, is that, and I am a military person from military people, and I know this for a fact, we have back engineered and they are flying here. They cannot do what ET does. And that's what I teach. Lo, lo, que, lo que ocurre es que ellos están continuamente intercambiando tripulaciones, o sea, van, vuelven, pero siempre hay algunos de ellos que están actuando aquí, pero van y vuelven. Yeah. Continuously, they are changing um, the people that are coming. It's not the same people. They, they come and go, but they change the, the crew. The crews are changed. Y, y, y recientemente los gobiernos están... Este, intimidados, se sienten presionados porque gigantescas naves están orbitando alrededor de la Tierra y han sido captadas por, por la Estación Espacial Internacional. Uh, governments have been pressured because huge UFOs have been shown and they have been pressured because I know they one shown in south of Chile, no sé si quieres mencionar eso, Sixto, and uh, here also. Yeah, you, la, la, la Estación Espacial Internacional Yeah. Fotografía de estos objetos cilíndricos gigantes. They've taken pictures of this huge cylindrical uh, UFOs uh, some time ago, and they've shown that, and uh, they came forward. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, three years ago, they had motherships coming in. They look purple in the night sky, big purple round smudge, and they're picking people off the planet that they were pulling out already who were living here so they could get out of the situation because it's really, really, really bad. Um, I have a question. Do you know of the false flag that people are talking about and what it, exactly that means for everybody here? Repeat the question, what is the what again? Do you know what the false flag is? Have you heard of it before? A, f a fake alien invasion? Invasion, yes. ¿Has escuchado acerca de una invasión sí. falsa? Sí. Bueno, ese, eso es un, es un plan de contingencia de parte del, del gobierno, eh, en, si, si no pueden evitar de que la información de, de la presencia de ellos salga a la luz, la mejor manera para alejar a la gente del tema es metiéndole miedo, inventando una supuesta invasión. It's a contingency plan from the government just to make people scared about this whole issue. Right. Make them scared. Yeah. And that is also false, by the way. Recientemente los mismos militares que han dado su testimonio pues en el Senado de los Estados Unidos han declarado que son seres, o sea, se puede ver claramente que no vienen con malas intenciones. Even people from the government have said these beings are not coming with bad intentions. Boy, I wish they'd talk out loud. <laughs> I'd love to hear them say that because in, in, in my travels throughout my lifetime, I hear absolutely the opposite. I hear things that are, um, have witnessed and know about plans that are not kosher, they're not okay. And they plan to annihilate a bunch of people with that. That That's the resource they have to control people, uh, making them afraid. That's cuando, that's what they cuando, do. Cuando llegaron los peregrinos provenientes de, de Inglaterra y se asentaron en las colonias de, de el este norteamericano, lo primero que hicieron fue meterle miedo con los indios, luego con las brujas, luego con los esclavos. O sea, siempre la idea es meterte miedo con algo. 
always is to make people afraid fear is control like one of the text messages that came through right now yep. like when they came yep. here they were making people afraid with the slaves with anything you know with the same type of disease always is making people afraid so they, can, so they can control them all right i have another question here this one's from john mills or oh wait actually that's not the question i want to get to that one later first this one it's from central wisconsin what kind of lifespan do these ETs have? At least the ones that you have. ¿Qué tiempo viven? ¿Qué tiempo viven estos seres? Sí, que ellos pueden vivir entre 2000 a 3000 años de los nuestros. They can very well live between 2 to 3000 years of ours. Ya que dominan la regeneración celular con el poder de la mente. They regenerate their cells through their mind power. Además de una adecuada metodología de vida. And also because of uh, um, a very good uh, methodology of life that they have. Y según ellos, las condiciones de vida fuera de la tierra son diferentes. And the conditions of life outside the earth are different. Right. Eh, o sea, las condiciones en la tierra fueron hechas a propósito para que no duráramos mucho. The conditions on earth uh, were made so that we would not last too much. Uh, for the purpose it was it was made. Yeah, porque era parte justamente de de ese proyecto, de ese plan, de esa experimentación de ellos. Because we were part of that project, of that plan, of that experimentation of theirs. Pero fuera de la tierra podríamos vivir mucho tiempo más. But outside the earth we could live many 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 more years. Mm, we don't um one of the things that I've learned uh in my lifetime, I'm also a registered nurse, okay? And uh, one of the things that I know absolutely is that our DNA is what holds us up. And if it's healthy, we can live very long time. If we drink healthy water and we breathe healthy air and we eat healthy food, that's three things that holds our DNA up. And we have not done that. We have They have done nothing but help poison us pretty well with all kinds of chemicals, drugs, you name it, on this planet. Our water is soiled. There isn't a place on this planet that has pure water anymore. Very few places left. And uh, we have uh, been encouraged to do that to ourselves. They not only manufacture the problem, but they encourage us to involve ourselves with it as well. And uh, plastic is a really bad one on us, and so is fluoride and things like that. It stops you from being awake. Consciously, your consciousness, you can't reach your consciousness if your pineal gland is down and not working properly. And uh, yeah, we have the ability to live much longer than we do, but it won't happen until we all clean ourselves up and work at it. You know, we have the ability to figure it out. We just chucked it and nobody's fighting back against those who want us to not live very long. Parece que está preocupando también a la gente que nos están dando cosas para vivir menos. Eh, como el, el fluoruro, etcétera, etcétera, Sixto. Eh, eh, el agua que tomamos. Eh. Eh, eh, por ejemplo, este, eh, Estados Unidos es el primer país productor de cítricos en el mundo. USA is the first citric. ¿Consume un jugo de naranja o una limonada natural? And do you think we drink a glass of orange juice, a natural glass of juice? Say again. Do you think we drink a natural uh, orange juice? No, uh, no, I won't and even touch it. We are no. one of the great, greatest citric countries in the world. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and, there and are people involved in this, you know, that are not wanting us to move forward. Exactly. 100%. I agree. It's más cómodo comer comida procesada, pero es lo menos sano posible, lo menos sano realmente. It's much more easy to, to eat and drink processed foods, but it's what's readily, readily available. Exactly. You take it away from them and then you make something that, that they only have available. That's exactly right. It's deliberate poisoning of us. It's bad. Well, I know, sister, you've written, I know, sister, you've written many, many books, and I would love for you to get a chance to talk about some of them. But here's one that was translated into mm -hmm. English. So many of the people listening today speak English. I was wondering if you could talk about this book, The Invitation. Mm -hmm. 
¿Qué nos puede decir de este libro? Sí. La invitación es la historia del contacto, cómo empezó, cómo evolucionó la experiencia. Es la experiencia del contacto, cómo se empezó, cómo se desarrolló, y todas esas experiencias están ahí. Como ellos, nos invitaron, life, right? sí, como ellos nos invitaron realmente a entrar a los centros, a los portales dimensionales y a toda esa dimensión de, de posibilidades que nos, que nos, a las que nos abrieron ellos. How they invited us to cross these sendras and all the other possibilities that they've given us so far. Exactly. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. That's a good book. Yeah, so hear that, guys, if you want to check out Sisto's story and how this all rolled out. That looks like a really good book to start with, but there's many, many books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have so many, mm -hmm. Sisto. I'm very impressed. Here's another one which looks quite interesting, which has also been translated into English. Can you talk a little bit about this? Sí. Eh, lo que pasa es que he tratado también de escribir libro para niños y explicarle a los, o sea, eh, explicarle en, en términos muy, muy divertidos, jocosos, cómo es la experiencia del contacto ya este, para niños. He's also written books for kids, so it'll be like, like an entertaining for kids to read. That's the purpose like of this book, for example. Entonces, explico la experiencia del contacto ya y todos sus detalles, pero de una forma divertida, en forma de, de un cuento para niños. He talks about the encounters with these beings, but in a funny way. So it's more mm -hmm. um, yeah. geared to, the, to, a, to, to a kid. Yep. I like yeah. that. That's great. Yeah, so many kids are having contact. Contact often starts as a young child, so. Right. And, and they have no fear, and it's better to encourage them not to. I think that's fantastic. Sí, justa, justamente eh, muchos niños eh, han venido a las conferencias, a las actividades que yo he hecho, y vienen y me cuentan sus experiencias, esperando que yo les ayude a entender por qué y para qué. Entonces me comprometí con ellos en que algún día sacaría un libro en donde explicara realmente pues, eh, el ABC del contacto, ¿no? para que ellos entendieran por qué ya, y, 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 o sea, y cuál es todo el mensaje final, ¿no? En many of the conferences I've given, uh, kids have come to me and they were asking for this and I've told them, these books have been, you know, meant and wrote for you. And that's why uh, he's, she's showing that book uh, right there. It's specifically for kids. Wow. Okay, here is another question which is kind of an interesting question because there was a big news story about a negative contact in Peru with which they explained as miners flying jetpacks I don't know if you're aware of this case but to be this is Peru eh, como la como la idea es meterle miedo a la gente se se quiso dar a entender que extraterrestres estaban secuestrando gente en la selva y eran simplemente mineros ilegales, ya que tenían unos jetpacks, o sea, eh, en los ríos, ya, y este, estaban extorsionando a, a la gente pobre, humilde, de las riberas de los ríos de la selva. They were trying to scare people. Miners were trying to do this on purpose just to scare people. And this has happened over and over again. Los periódicos sensacionalistas de inmediato dijeron que eran extraterrestres, que estaban secuestrando gente y que estaban eh, asediando y después la policía llegó y descubrió que eran este, mineros ilegales y, y gente delincuente y a mafiosos que extorsionaban a la gente pobre, pero era gente de aquí. They were illegal miners. They were trying to scare people only to um, try to sell their stuff. You know, it's it's it, it's wrong and it happened. Pero ya la, not la noticia salió a nivel internacional. Extraterrestres están atacando a gente pobre de los pueblos del interior de la selva de Perú y todo. And the news came out, you know, thinking this bad news that you guys are talking about. And it's, it's right. false. Right. We have that going on in this country as well. Aquí también pasa eso, dice ella. 
so much disinformation. That's Great. why I'm so glad to have you on this show. Because I don't think the ETs are here to harm us. All the research I've done shows that they're here to help, heal, guide, teach, warn, lift up our consciousness. Uno cuando va por la cordillera en, encuentra en pueblitos muy alejados gente muy agradecida con los apus, con los seres del cielo, porque cada cierto tiempo vienen con sus naves y hacen curaciones y, y ayudas a la gente allí donde no llega el, el gobierno ni los médicos ni nada. Uh, many of these uh, farmers, uh, peasants, uh, when you go into the country, they are very thankful with the ETs because many times they have come and healed their sick. Places where not even the government has put a, a place where they can get cured uh, or nothing, but uh, they have been helped by aliens um, more than once. Yeah. I, I really love the fact that more people in South America, south of the border here, are more open to speaking about ET and more uh, transparent in how they feel about it. And uh, some of the governments, they're a little bit more transparent as well, although I'm not sure 100% about that. But um, every time I meet somebody from South America, I am amazed at how much they know and how many experiences they've all had. And they talk very freely about it. And I congratulate everybody down there for that. It's important. We don't do that here. We haven't done that here. And it's su somewhat suffocating for the people here because of it. Está agradecido y sorprendido por la apertura que tiene mucha gente a este tema en Sudamérica. Pues este, eh, últimamente a través de los documentales y todo, eh, se están eh, eh, tocando el tema de los contactos en los Estados Unidos y es sorprendente en los pueblos del interior de Texas, eh, el interior de, de Colorado, de, de Arizona y todo, gente de los pueblos contando las experiencias de contacto abiertamente que antes no se atrevían a contar, ahora lo están contando abiertamente. If you go to some of these towns in many of the states, people are talking as well here. If you go to the little towns that are far away, people are talking about this now. Wow. Here in the states. O sea, las cosas están cambiando. The things are changing, he says. Yes. Good. I'd like to put up another picture I found, which uh, you guys sent to us. I don't know if you remember this one. Sí. Or... En, en el año 89 se hizo la quinta convocatoria a la prensa a un encuentro programado con anticipación. 1989, there was an invitation to the press. So they were all invited, the press were invited, so they can corroborate that the contact is real. And there you go, that's the picture they took. We don't 40, take the picture. 40 periodistas de ocho países y el objeto estuvo a unos 80 metros de altura haciendo evoluciones y fue videograbado y fotografiado por los periodistas. 40 people Amazing. from the different media took the pictures and videos themselves. That's one y of the pictures. Los, los periodistas That's beautiful. Dijeron, yeah. Yeah. Los periodistas dijeron, este, por lo menos un documental de una hora de duración a nivel mundial. Y cuando ellos regresaron a los Estados Unidos, los censuraron y les quitaron las filmaciones y no les permitieron darlas a conocer. And they said then they, they wanted to have at least one hour of, uh, you know, something to show to the people. And they gather all this, but, you know, coming here into the States, they were stopped and they were uh, taking all the information yes. in, in the Miami mm -hmm. airport. So they blocked right. all, all the media. Yeah, they do. Um, uh, in 2021, my craft that I fly, Uh, followed me from uh, Florida to Las Vegas, where I landed, and then uh, with a friend of mine drove to Laughlin to go to a con there, and he deliberately followed me because he wanted to be seen, okay? It was important, and he was seen in Las Vegas, and they brought the news up, and they talked about it, citing him, uh, but uh, they immediately took it down, like a couple of days later. I was very, uh, and I took a bunch of film of him in Laughlin and Preston came uh, then also another friend of mine got to see him we got a lot of pictures and um, I did this on purpose because I knew my story was coming out then and I wanted you know he because I flied flew 
they didn't want me to be too much out in the open yet. And because I chose to take this route and start divulging information to people, he came down and let me get pictures of him from the ground. And uh, every time they go up, the government likes to knock them down offline. They've pulled six of my videos off my YouTube. I'm not kidding you. I have stuff disappear out of my computer. I'm not kidding. Have you had any trouble from the government, Sisto? Yeah. Many times. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes, a lot. Here, here's another really interesting photograph that you sent to us. Sí. Oh. Esto es en la isla de Rapa Nui, en la isla de Pascua, en el año 2007. 2007, Easter Island. Rapa Nui. Estamos, allí, estamos ahí con los militares, estamos ahí con un psiquiatra, estamos ahí con muchísima gente y la nave a plena luz del día, pues moviéndose, saliendo del cráter del volcán. We were there with the military, with the psychiatrist, mm -hmm. and the ship showed up exactly where they say and when they said. That's amazing. I, I, I want to be honest. I never heard of you before Preston told me who you were. I'm sort of had goggles on my, they wouldn't let me have any contact with the people around here or what they were talking about until I came out. And then I had to like, jump into the deep end of the pool and try to figure out who everybody was. And the minute he men mentioned you, I did not realize that you are the father of CE5, okay, as we understand it. You're the guy, not the other one in America, <laughs> you. And I was so impressed. I was so impressed. I was like, oh, this is great. If you enter my YouTube están esos videos, eso en video, para que los puedan ver. O sea, en movimiento, con los testigos, con toda la gente. Este, estamos ahí atrás, la, la nave se está moviendo, y están todos los militares, o sea, todo el mundo de testigo, a plena luz del día. You can go into my YouTube channel, you can see all that. All my videos are right there, free of charge. That's fantastic. Okay. okay. Well, I'm going to be diving into that soon. Like There's tomorrow. another question from Jacques Dion, and he's asking, Sisto, Will the ETs show themselves to all the world in the near future? ¿Se van a mostrar los extraterrestres al mundo entero? Este, en, en mayo del 2020, el gobierno japonés este, dijo haber movilizado protocolos frente a una posible invasión extraterrestre, porque se habían registrado tal cantidad de observaciones y descenso de ovnis sobre todo el territorio del Japón durante el año 2020. May 2020, Japan have made a lot of protocols of how to act when they come and invade us. There were so many ET showing in Japan. So they have a lot of protocols for this. Y eso fue en, la, en, en plena época del COVID. And this is during COVID. Sí. Wow. Yeah, este, entonces ya se están manifestando abiertamente. Lo que pasa they es que... They are already manifesting no... themselves. Ya, este, ocultan o silencian eh, los grandes medios de comunicación este, no le dan la importancia de lo que está pasando a nivel mundial they hide the communication they hide all this information they don't want to give the real importance to the subject right now people are too distracted and that's what they want for us to be distracted ustedes recuerdan que en el año 2013 el doctor Stephen Greer el grupo Disclosure Project reunió a, a los más importantes investigadores en el club de prensa de Washington, ¿no? Y el gobierno bloqueó a, para que las cadenas de noticias no estuvieran presentes en el club de prensa de Washington. Richard Gere, he was also blocked in the Washington Press Club. So none of the media would show up. The government stopped them. And he had all the proofs there at, here yeah. in D.C. Did you hear recently, uh, three days ago, I think it was, they, uh, Congress completely blocked the UAP Act. In other words, they're not going to allow anybody to disclose and not be reprimanded for it from, from uh, people in the government. They're not giving anybody immunity from that. They have taken that one off the block and it's sort of leveled everybody who knows about it. I'm wondering if you heard that. Is it Justamente el 26 de julio, ¿no? cuando los tres militares hablaron y dieron su testimonio. 
July 26, three military people talked and gave their testimony. Pero uno de ellos eh, habló de que el gobierno norteamericano tiene restos de naves y restos de tripulantes. But one of them said that the U.S. have, uh, you know, beings and, and, and also ships uh, with them. Eso todo el mundo lo sabe. Everybody Eso knows no that. This is nothing new. Correct. Pero, pero debido a ese testimonio, han bloqueado, han bloqueado todas las nuevas audiencias all the para new liberación de información. Audiences, all, all this new information has been blocked for the information to be liberated, to be given away. Right. Experiencers are nowhere. They don't allow experiencers at all to be no, este señor, ya Debbie Grush, no es un intoxicador informativo puesto a propósito para bloquear la liberación de información. They have been blocking all this information to come out. Wow. O sea, no, no ayudó, perjudicó. It did not help. It made it worse. Lo mismo que está pasando con lo de las supuestas momias de Nazca. Same thing that is happening right now with the mummies, the Nazca mummies. O sea, o sea, una, una momia antigua la han manipulado eh, para que parezca un extraterrestre. They manipulated cuando, a mummy so it will look like an extraterrestrial. Correct. La, la gente de Nazca y de Paracas, en right. el sur del Perú, se, los nobles se deformaban los cráneos para asemejarse a los seres del cielo. No que sean extraterrestres, right. era la gente que se deformaba los cráneos a propósito, era parte de su costumbre hacerlo. Nazca people and people from Paracas, they would change and deform their skulls so they would look like them, but they yeah. were not ETs. They were trying yeah. to make y, themselves y look lo, like them. Lo que han hecho es, es mutilar, mutilar la momia para que parezca, disfrazarla de extraterrestre de una forma irrespetuosa. So they've changed this mummy on purpose, so it will look like an extraterrestrial. So Pero that is that. Las otras momias pequeñas y todo están armadas con restos de animales eh, cu cubiertas, casi cubiertas como, como una especie de yeso, que es un sedimento del desierto de Nazca que se llama diatomea, para que no sea tan fácil poder tomar las muestras. And other kids uh, also uh, bones have been deformed even with animal parts. So um, it's incredible the way they try to uh, change the the way they looked, you know? I know. It's, there's, yeah. it's, it's los, los, distressing. Los cráneos, los cráneos de las supuestas momias y yeah. todo son cráneos de, de alpacas, de auquénidos, de camélidos, yeah. cortados, cortados, ya, yeah, y puestos de, de al revés para que parezca un rostro alienígena. Their skulls are from alpacas, like like the llama relative. Yes. The alpacas right. were used, right. uh, turned around, so right. it would look and resemble an ET. Look right. how bad they did this. I know. Do you know how many people in this country believed it outright? Were watching it online, and absolutely believed it outright, and would argue the point that it's the government giving the information and, and it's like really hard to explain to people that there is a thing out there that you have to you have to think about everything if you don't know the science of something look it up because there's lots of information out there that would show you why that was not correct you know Mucha gente lo creyó, dice exactly right, you know sí. por eso yeah. cómo puedes tú hacer que en una época como esta en que empieza a liberarse información la gente termine sabiendo menos que al principio. So how can you do during these times that people will end up believing less than at the beginning because people are confusing people. Exactly. O sea, sueltas right. medias verdades y mentiras. Right. You're saying uh, half truths, half lies, and people end up getting yeah. everything distorted. Exactly. Se meten tan ingeniosamente con lo poco que se sabe. They're mixing up everything with the little, the, with the little right. stuff that we know. Y la gente termina al final con una ensalada. And ya, people no end up qué, with, qué, qué you know, totally confused. Totally confused. Yes, right, exactly. It's a mess. I agree, 100%. Yeah. Right. It's a mess. Well, Sisto, you've written many, many books. We have about 
five minutes left before we have to close the show, but I wanted to show some of the books you've written, which I know are not all in English, but um, hopefully one day you'll be able to get these all translated. Yeah. But soon, um, soon. The, soon. Because, this one has uh, already been translated. Uh, Cesar is, uh, is working about this. Yeah. All right. So here are some of the many books you've written. And I just wanted to show people. Oh, this, this one is in English. Yes. Yes. What was the name of that girl? Um, Tanis. Say Tanis. her name. Yes. Is the Tanis. name of my, my, my daughter. Yes. Okay. Tanis. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> my daughter's name is Esther. Oh. And I'm Dorothy. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Oh, the door of Orion. Do they come from Orion? Yes. Ah, Dolly, yes. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've been <laughs> to the whole planet. Yeah. I want to ask you if you've heard this. This is what they call it, okay? It's not like a name of a planet, like we would name a planet, but it's their home, and they have a way of talking about it. And it's Endelmach is what they call it, Endelmach. That is the name of where they come from. And uh, most Native Americans and even Native uh, South Americans know that what that sounds like in their ear. And they know that there you go. I've heard that before. And it's Anilma. So I love the butterfly. Oh, <laughs> that does not exist. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> I'm glad that you wrote about that. Es que es muy interesante toda la información que los extraterrestres han dado sobre la vida y la muerte. Very interesting all the information that the ETs have given us about um, life and death. Porque well, para ellos, o sea, right. la, la muerte no existe. Simplemente them, es, es al, al fin, es eh, como una etapa que termina como al final del año escolar. O sea, tienes unas vacaciones, un descanso y te preparas para la siguiente existencia. Y según ellos existe la reencarnación, las vidas sucesivas. Que así como nosotros no enviamos al colegio a nuestros niños un año, sino año tras año, ¿no? igualmente tenemos muchas oportunidades. Same thing. Uh, death does not exist, they say, and uh, it's like we going to school. We end up a year and then we get ready for the next year. And, uh, you know, that's what's going on. Um, exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, well, we do have to say goodbye. I'm so sad because I know you have so much more to share, but we do have time for any last messages you'd like to give or if, if you can explain to people how they might reach you. I know you have a website. Sisto Paz Wells. Type it in on the internet. It'll take you there. Vivimos en un universo sin límites. El único límite es nuestra ignorancia. We live in a universe without limits. The only limit we have is our ignorance. Y estamos justamente en el momento en que toda la información tiende a liberarse. Tiende and we're in the moment right now that va a salir a la luz. Todo. All the information is coming out. Everything is coming out to the light. So we all exactly. got to work. We have to believe in it. Yep. Search for it. And uh, don't be afraid to ask them. It, when you open your mind up, and you contact them yourself while you're healing yourself, learning to meditate and do all the things you need to do for yourself, they will answer you. People, I know people who have told me, I've gotten answers. And it's like, of course you would. If you, if you genuinely try to contact them, they will answer you. You will get a message. It's important to hear that, you know? Mm -hmm. well, I'm so, so grateful and thankful mm -hmm. that you both came on, Sisto and Cesar. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Your story is amazing. Everyone in chat loves you. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. We're very blessed that you joined us this evening. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for yes. inviting us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Muchas gracias. Happy Christmas. And Merry yeah. Christmas, Preston and Dolly. <laughs> thank you. Feliz Navidad. Okay. Feliz Navidad. We've been on the light gate. I'm hoping to invite you back again because there's lots more to mm -hmm. unpack with this. It would be our honor if you would agree to come back again on the show. 
Uh, we have come to you live from the beautiful city of New Orleans at the United Public Radio Network at 107.7 and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3 FM. I want you all to have a blessed week. I hope that um, everything that you're doing from now until the new year is healthy for you and happy for you. Enjoy your children. They're the best things that are. And night night, everybody.